is a great pleasure that I bring into the stage both a friend of mine and famously that guy from the internet. <laughs> He's wearing a slightly off red shirt. Can you please put your hands together? Welcome to the stage is Tom Scott. <laughs> Great, black clicker, black table, it's wonderful. Hello, my name is Tom Scott. Hello! Hello. Hey, wonderful, you're alive. Um, I am an accidental emoji expert. I didn't mean to. Also, sorry, let's get some one thing out of the way. This is going to be less of a polished talk than I normally do. There are two reasons for that. One, I didn't quite rehearse as much as I should. Uh, and two, uh, I hate shtick. I hate the idea that uh, you become that person known for that thing. And yet, I, I, I've had plenty of shticks in my time. I had the pirate shtick, that was a bad year. <laughs> Uh, and now I have the emoji stick. And I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, but me and a friend came up with an idea. We built, uh, we built a messenger on your, on your phone that you could only send emoji through. <laughs> Even your username had to be emoji. And we got 70,000 people signing up to that because they all went, what? I've got to get an emoji as my username. What do I do? What do I do? And like, it turns out you can be rude in emoji. Really creative. We thought we wouldn't have to put a swear filter on that. <laughs> yeah, we did. A lot, lot of lot of old machines. Lot of old machines. <laughs> we killed that after just under a year, but then I went and made this, which is a full-size emoji keyboard. Um, I say full-size, it's 14 keyboards. So uh, there are a lot, lot of emoji, all hooks up, all hooks up. But as a result of that, it turns out that I, I now know the technical details, and most of the technical details of how emoji works. Uh, also turns out that I am now an expert on emoji to the extent that Radio 2 called me up and said, can you bring me keyboard in? I thought, Radio, keyboard. <laughs> and literally, there was a moment where I was like, could you, uh, what, what does it sound like? Time points. It sounds like a keyboard. <laughs> so I'm an accidental and grumpy emoji expert. Um, these are the first emoji. These are the first ones that, that were ever made. I think they've been coloured here, uh, which were annoying, but uh, one engineer in Japan uh, decided that they had a bit, because computers, which is all the detail you get in a 10 minute talk, um, <laughs> there was a bit of room left over. So there's the idea of text encoding, which is where you take uh, the letters that we write in and you turn them into ones and zeros that computers can understand. America kind of did that first, or at least did the, did the big worldwide version of that. So that's great, you have A to Z, zero to nine, doesn't take up that much room. Japan Loads more characters need a bit more room, and because computers, they had a bit of space left over. So one engineer goes, you know what, we can put pictures in there, because we're basically, you know, we're sending a lot of different pictures for each character. Let's add some more. So those are the first emojis, some transports, some star signs, some numbers, and they're just used on one mobile network. And then the next mobile network went, that is a brilliant idea. We're having that. And we they produced a completely different and incompatible system, and then a third <laughs> network did the same. And this was fine, because they didn't work together. And then along came the Unicode Consortium, <laughs> which does sound like a sci-fi bag, but they're actually the, uh, the, the linguists and computer scientists in charge of making sure that everyone can talk to each other online. The reason that uh, someone in Japan can send you a text in Japanese and it will now arrive on your phone intact is because of these guys. The most amazing thing uh, in, in computer standardization has ever been done. They went to France. They looked at France. They said, you're mostly like English. That's fine. You've got, you got, you got a little bit of a weird letter there. That's fine. We can take France. We're going to take your letters. We're going to put them just there in the standards. You okay? You're cool. All right. They went to Russia. Russia and, and all that. So, oh, you've got a whole different alphabet. All right. That, that's fine. We're going to take your alphabet. Oh, oh, sorry. Belarus, you've got some more letters. Okay. We're going to take all those. And we're going to put them just there. And then they got to Japan and went, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> right, Japan, okay, that's fine, you've got all of these, but like, mm, okay, right, that's fine, we're gonna, gonna put them in the standard, just it. Japan, one of those. <laughs> We use them to communicate. They're, they're characters. You've got to include them. You know, two-way. Two what, what do you think? We, we, we let America have the smiley face, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> right, fine, fine, Japan. We're going to take those, we're going to put them in there, and no one is going to care. And no one did care, and then Apple came along. <laughs> and Apple wanted to sell iPhones in Japan, so they put an emoji keyboard on there, and no one noticed for a little while, and then one person in Britain, uh, sorry, in America, went, I can send piles of poo to my friends. <laughs> so they did. And their friends went, how do you, you do that? 
show me. And sometimes it's like ready-made viral explosion of piles of poo, which is, I, I guess it's dysentery. But, um, <laughs> and now we have emoji uh, cushions and emoji pillows. That's a uh, photo of our friend uh, Dan, uh, who, who was walking around Dalston, found emoji pillows, and then found another shop selling emoji. It turns out there's a lot of emoji pillows in Dalston. They must have once one. Um, this is the Unicode Consortium's motto. It is enabling people around the world to use computers in any language. This is how the world sees the Emoji Consortium. Uh, the U Emoji Consortium. <laughs> this is how the, uh, the world sees the Unicode Consortium's motto. <laughs> so, uh, Unicode 9 is out soon. And this is how I see them as talking to words. Like, hey, well, Unicode, is out, Unicode 9 is out now, and it's amazing. Uh, it's got the Osage alphabet in it. This is an alphabet that was only designed like a few years ago. This is amazing. It's got the Georgian Lari symbol, brand new currency symbol, it's in there. Like they've sit, sat down in committee meetings and had really vicious fights between different representatives from different countries about how particular languages should go in, because it's actually really complicated. Uh, and the world went, okay. <laughs> By the way, they say, we've got some new emoji too, and suddenly we can! <laughs> They don't know what this emoji is. They don't know what this emoji is, by the way. Are you in it? Is that me? Yeah, that's close. Uh, seriously, cha quick share on. Oh, triumph. triumph! Yes, who was up there first? There was a, there was a measuring tape going for like. Alright, so this is this is worrying. This, this might not work. Uh, yeah. Missed by a mile, one point. I did not do well at sports. Um, yeah, it's it's look of triumph, which no one actually uses it for because it was designed in Japan and that's a different cultural reference, which is great. So the 2016 emoji are out soon. Here are some of them. This is from Emojipedia, which is a thing. They, they allow reuse of this with, uh, with credit. These are some of what we've got. So uh, this is about half the candidates. Uh, we've got nauseated face. Let's be honest, that's over to you. That was meant to be. We've got duck. Obviously, that's fine. We don't have duck face, which feels like it should be in there. Uh, we do have selfie, so you can put that next to any emoji now. Just, just put that on it. Uh, we also have Dancing Man. I'll get back to him in a minute. Uh, they're going to get ratified, probably in a meeting in May 2016. They'll be on your phone by the end of the year. Probably. Maybe. But what's interesting for me, at least, is the 2017 emoji. Because we've, we've got a few candidates for that now. We might have Chinese takeout box and skeptical face with one eyebrow raised. But that's not the interesting thing, because recently we've had these. We've had skin tone modifiers. Now, uh, these are really important, these are, these are fantastic because it means it's not all default yellow, as anyone who's watched The Simpsons know, knows, <laughs> yellow is not default neutral. But, if you want to actually make one of these, behind the scenes you are putting the regular emoji in, and then you are putting what is called a skin tone modifier, or a tag character. Uh, from 1 to 5 on the Fitzpatrick scale, which is a, a skin tone scale. Um, so there's actually two separate characters there, and they merge together. The 2017 emojis, are going to get more tags. If proposal, yeah, I said this is a lot of detail, if proposal TR52 gets ratified <laughs> next year. And the tag characters that are going to get added are for gender, gender, hair colour, and possibly direction. Direction's easy, it's so that everyone agrees which way the gun is pointing when you do an emoji that someone shot someone. It's good for, like, I don't know if you shot someone. Um, <laughs> hair colour. It's going to be uh, black, brown, red, grey, blonde, and one that I've forgotten. Who have I missed? White, white. No? Bald! That's it. No hair at all. <laughs> I know at least three people in here who have different hair colours to that. If you have an issue with that, please take it up with the Unicode Consortium. <laughs> uh, which is taken, I swear, that from the list of uh, hair colours that are valid for US driver's licences and the UN ground pass. I looked at this specification. That's where they got the, the list from. So you will be able to have a different skin colour, different hair colour, and crucially, different gender presentation. Because, on the left, is how Apple says dancer. And on the right is how Android said dancer until recently. So if you were a woman, you said, I'm feeling like this today. <laughs> it did not go well when, when it came through to, to an Android user. So there is now a separate woman dancer and man dancer, but for everything else, the idea is you have a character and then a gender symbol. Which is great, because currently the Unicode construction worker is male, and the Unicode receptionist is female, because apparently it's the 1980s. <laughs> and if you think this is ridiculous, this is, this is my final point, if you think this is ridiculous, if you think this is 
this is too much, this is something that no one should care about, this is just a lot of, of wrangling over a minor detail. Yes, it sort of is. And that boardroom meeting um, will we'll have a lot of things to decide about it. But if you think this is not something you care about, just imagine how the people in that board meeting feel. Because they've got a long list. I've seen the agenda for the last meeting, I read it. It's got all sorts of really wonderful things. Some of the best uh, linguists, some of the best computer scientists, some of the best computational linguists are going to be in that room deciding really important things about language and how we're going to use it. And the only thing that the press are going to care about in 2017 <laughs> is whether there is going to be a condom emoji. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tom Scott. Enjoy the night. anything from Tom Scott, it is <laughs> shtick happens, and uh, vote yes on Proposition TR52. Uh, so uh, there you go, and Tom, true YouTube professional, he was talking, someone bumped a glass over, he paused for an edit break. <laughs> Fragment. So he 